Hello and welcome back to the channel for another episode in my Biosyn Valley Park build. So as you can see I'm deleting all of this park tool because I really don't like how it worked out. And I was experimenting the other day like after I made um, one of my other videos because I was really annoyed about the um, no guests being in my park. So I um, placed like a DFW park entrance type thing and um, connected things up with the power stations like I thought I heard and um, you wouldn't believe it, it actually works. Look, did you see that? There's guests. So um, yeah, I'm really happy about that. Um, it's given me a lot more like, energy to put more effort into this build because um, I don't know, it's like about it, I weren't too happy with it when I was like, no guests in my park. I thought all the park tour going around was really ugly, but um, yeah, I managed to fix it and um, I'm much happier with it now and I think I built two of the best enclosures that I've ever built in my opinion. Um, yeah, I was really happy with how they turned out in this episode, so um, you can stick around to see them. I mean, I'm just building fences around all these different areas and I basically redo all of the areas that I've done but with the power station instead of a park tour. But enough of that, in this episode I build an enclosure for some Dimetrodon and an enclosure for some Baryonyx. There's also the cinematics at the end which I really enjoy making so um, yeah, be sure to stick around for that. Um, but yeah, you can see here just me getting rid of everything that I placed before and making it look much better in my opinion. To be fair, I actually really like the design of the power station. Um, in the Biosyn uh, pack because it actually like you imagine it to be like a Hyperloop station if that makes sense so you've got those two turbine things at the back well I have no idea what they are but they just look like it would be like some sort of um, um, I don't know like an engine for the power loop, the Hyperloop um, I don't know something that gets the <laughs> trains moving I'm not an engineer as you can tell but um, it looks so much better than the tours that we put in I'd also like to say now that um, suggestions are welcome, so um, if you have any suggestions what dinosaurs I should put in the park, I'm going to put all of the bias in dinosaurs in the park, so don't worry about that. But um, yeah, if you have any dinosaurs you want, enclosure ideas, um, dinosaurs you want named, just put that in the comments and I'll get to it. Um, I only pick like one of each though, so um, one I can name one dinosaur, uh, I'll take one idea for an enclosure and take one idea for what dinosaur you want. Uh, if that makes sense, because I don't want to get overloaded, because there was a point where, um, I think it was my Jurassic Park 3 series, that got really popular. That's um, still probably one of the best series I've done on my channel. Probably is the best, like the most viewed series on this channel, which I'm really happy about. But um, yeah, I got overwhelmed with comments on that one, <laughs> and um, got a bit too much at the end. So um, yeah, I only take a few, because I don't want to get overloaded again. Although all of your ideas are really great, I really do appreciate them. And um, yeah, they really help out in building the parks. But yeah, I just started placing some of these watchtowers. So I realised I didn't place them in most of my enclosures and I thought, it's Biosyn Park, why haven't I got the towers? So yeah, I just um, added all of them in to make it more similar to the facility that we see in the actual film. But um, yeah, it's just placing all the trees there to hide and all the things I don't like. I want it to look really foresty, this park. But um, yeah, here we go. Getting to work on our Dimetrodon enclosure. I always get confused between Dimetrodon and Dimorphodon. I know they're, they're totally different, but just like about, I always think... Wait, is it Dimorphodon or Dimitrodon? I, actually, I don't know, there's something similar about the names. But as you can see, I connected it up to the Dilophosaurus enclosure and um, the little research facility area bit, and I'm going to place another viewing gallery there. And you see that little Dilophosaurus running through the gap in the fence. I was so happy when that happened. It saved me manually tranquilizing and moving it. So, um, yeah, he's a hero. But yeah, I lowered um, this little bit here to make a watering hole. And I did a little like peninsula to make it a bit more interesting. And of course, smoothing that all out to get rid of the rough edges. So I go just placing all the trees there. And then, yeah, the jeeps, um, they kept getting stuck again. But yeah, it's just a matter of removing some trees. And uh, everything was back to normal. I then got to work on placing some sand in this enclosure because um, I think in the Permian era, which is where the Dimitrodon's from, um, I'm not too sure on that. You might have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's from the Permian. I think it was like a big desert. Um, well, that's what I imagine. I mean, I watched Walking with Dinosaurs like when I was younger and um, like the Triassic. He was a massive desert, so I thought um, before it would still be like a massive desert. So yeah, put a lot of sand and like some desert rocks in to make it more like a um, natural area for where the Dimetrodon would have lived. Um, however many years ago that was, um, yeah, I'm not too sure. I know it's 65 million years ago from the when the asteroid struck the Earth, but um, yeah, I don't know how far back it actually goes to like the Triassic. But as you can see here, I'm just connecting everything up um, to the path as well as this viewing gallery that I placed and I get to work on placing the fence for that and making that look really neat. I'm 
and placing all these individual trees in um, the gap which is too small for like the regular tree brush and I really enjoy filling that blank gaps like this it just makes things look so much more natural and like I hate blank space so yeah it's really satisfying for me but um, yeah now we get to work on creating some Dimetrodons I used the 2022 skin because you know it's, this is a film based part and I wanted it to be as close to the film as I could get so yeah, I think we had about eight of these in the end and uh, here we go they're basically just big lizards like the way they run, it's so lizard like. They also have some of the best animations I've seen in this game, which you'll see later on. I managed to capture a couple. I finally get it. I finally understand why people have a fear of the dark. Once you peer into the shadows and see a pair of Dimetrodon eyes staring back at you, well, you'll be having nightmares for years. That's if you're lucky enough to walk away, because believe me, not everybody is. I like that little introduction to the dinosaur. Um, actually, no, it's not a dinosaur, is it? It's a post-mammalian synapsid, I believe. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a little reference to the film, which I thought was quite cool. Yeah, uh, placing a ranger post there. Uh, really disappointed about that. You still have to use ranger posts to refill food. I'm going to say that in nearly every episode, aren't I? <laughs> but um, anyway, yeah, it's just um, scoping out um, part of the map there for where I want to put the baryonyx exhibit. But yeah, place it near the river, as you'll see, and I have a little cool um, little feature which you'll see in a minute yeah all of these Dimetrodon are just getting moved in the way they run is so funny but here we go with a closer look so we have this Dimetrodon here looking for food I've just realised the head of the Dimetrodon looks a lot like a T-Rex. It's like a T-Rex's head on a <laughs> massive lizard's body. But yeah, they have a really cool um, way of eating food, I think. So I have a little eating animation here, which I thought was really cool. Nothing too unique, but still cool. <laughs> the way it runs, look at it. Oh, I love that. Yeah, so I've decided to name this one Crimson because of the big red sail on its back. Um, yeah, not a, <laughs> I always name them dinosaurs after colours. But I mean, they do their social animation. <laughs> it just plonks its head on the other one. I love that. <laughs> it's like, nope, not even that. And it shoves its foot on its head and presses it into the ground. <laughs> I love that. Frontier do such an amazing job with making these dinosaurs more like likeable. For a reptile with such short legs, it can run fast. <laughs> Look at it go. Oh, so funny the way it runs. Love that. But um, yeah, I decided to name the Alpha Dimetrodon and I named it Lamar from someone called CJF. So thank you very much for that suggestion, CJF. Um, if you're watching this, uh, here you go. Here's a Dimetrodon named Lamar, which is what you asked for. It's quite a cool name, actually. I like that. I don't know if it's a reference to anything you know, and I'm not getting it, but um, yeah. Oh, I love that animation. Oh, it's hitching its head. <laughs> it's just like a big lizard dog. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's got to be one of my new favorites. It's just so unique. Yeah, definitely uh, one of the best dinosaurs in the game. But I mean, yeah, let's resume the build now. So this is the Baryonyx enclosure that I built. So I left that little triangle area at the bottom there, which is where I place like the research area. So yeah, I decided here to place the invisible fence in the water because it would hide it under like the surface. And I thought if it was a river, it'd be really deep and the dinosaurs probably wouldn't swim across. I don't know if Baryonyx could swim or not, but um, in theory, they um, can't swim in my head. <laughs> so um, yeah, I just thought it was a cool way to separate um, like the different land masses from um, like with the river. So there's an invisible fence in the middle so the dinosaur can't cross the river in theory. But um, yeah, I thought that was really cool. I really um, thought I'd done a cool job with this. But, yeah, placing the viewing gallery there. Then um, adding some height variation throughout this exhibit. And of course, adding the sand texture to carry on the trend that we've done on our herbivore enclosure. I'll probably finish off the entire river with sand eventually. 
whom you're using another power station as a, a hyperloop station. <laughs> Who would have thought out of all the buildings, the actual like hyperloop station would be a power station? <laughs> like, um, I don't know why that is, but um, I'm so happy that I finally like found a way to get guests around my park because now it actually looks like um. Uh, a park that's functioning instead of just a park with nobody in. But yeah, lining up all the fence in there with the path to make it look nice and neat. And uh, yeah, it's quite an enclosed claustrophobic area, this one. And I make it even more claustrophobic by adding decorations and trees. So there's only a really narrow path through here. And I quite liked it in the end. Yes, yeah, so placing all these trees up here, bushes and stuff. And of course just a few bits of random stuff because obviously this is a working area and then we yeah, finished that off and I thought it looked quite cool so I just placed some shrubbery in that there and then getting to work on the baryonics so I had one regular skin then I placed some others with a skin pattern that I can't actually remember but here we are of our baryonics my local carnivorous dinosaur here in the UK um, I'm sure there's other carnivores that were like Okay, uncovered in the UK, but um, Baryonyx was the first carnivorous slash pestivorous dinosaur that I ever really knew of as a kid. So it's always had a special place in my heart, and um, yeah, probably one of my favourite dinosaurs. Although I'm not too keen on the Jurassic World design, um, I do like it. I do really like it, but um, I prefer um, other renditions I've seen. Yeah, just getting all of these moved in. Um, add some more bits and pieces here and there. But yeah, just placing some trees here and there. Making the enclosure look a lot more nicer. I'm getting a little look at our dinosaurs there, but I get a proper look at them towards the end of the video because I'm still working on different bits and pieces. I then decided to add a few more baryonics. Yeah, I added a couple there. Just because um, I thought the exhibit was a bit too big for having it originally added. But, um, here we go with our live footage of our baryonics. <laughs> little animation. So I decided to name this baryonyx Claudia. Um, so that was a bit of a play on words because um, obviously baryonyx means heavy claw and um, yeah Claudia. <laughs> so, yeah a bit of a funny name for me. Well I thought it was funny but um, you probably might not. <laughs> So I decided to have a quick cut there because my baryonyx were busy doing nothing. <laughs> it's been the most boring dinosaur on earth, but um, I managed to capture this one. Having a little snack on some um, fish. I love this animation for the pescivores. I like the way they like, dip their like, the snout into the water and wait for it and then just grab it. I don't know if it's different for any of the other, um, or if it's just like the same animation for all of the fish-eating dinosaurs. I really liked how this enclosure turned out actually. A little view from our viewing gallery there. Got quite a few in shot actually. But yeah, I'm so happy. Look at that, there's guests. There's actually guests walking around. Oh, it's about time. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. That really annoyed me when they wouldn't spawn. But um, yeah, there's some space there. So obviously enclosure ideas and that welcome. And that pretty much wraps up this episode. So, of course, thank you for watching. Um, if you don't mind, I'd really appreciate it if you could maybe like, subscribe. Obviously, if you don't want to, then don't. Um, I'm not forcing you. We also have the cinematic shots coming up, so be sure not to miss that. And, of course, if you have any suggestions, just let me know in the comments. But, um, yeah, thank you for watching again. And I'll see you in the next video. See you later.